OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Okay, great. So my name is Jennifer Gallardi. I'm with OTAN and I'm a subject matter expert. I present on uh, topics of, uh, of technology, specifically video and citizenship. Uh, so let's get started. So today we're going to talk about creating a YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to add content to a YouTube channel. We will create playlists to deliver targeted content uh, because otherwise if you just send a video to a student, they might just go off the deep end into uh, to YouTube or to TikTok. And uh, we will talk about questions about closed captions or privacy rights, whatever you would like to do at the end. Uh, so I'm going to talk about creating a YouTube channel. And one of the big questions that I have um, uh, that people always ask me is, can you create a YouTube channel with a non uh, Gmail, Gmail email account? So I tried to do that several times. And I got basically put back into a loop again and again. They want to sign me into the Google Suites to create the Gmail account. So I would say it's best not to create a, G, uh, a YouTube account or a YouTube channel with a non-Gmail email. Okay. So, but, um, so... Uh, you can create a workaround or something that would be similar, but still they really want you to use Gmail to create your YouTube channel. Also, another thing is, is that they would prefer when you're starting, when you're starting to practice, use your own private Gmail to get some practice in before you move on and create something for your school or uh, your work, uh, work account, your professional accounts. So there's two ways that you can create a channel. The first thing is, is that you can go from the, the Gmail account waffle, choose Gmail. So here I'm already, I'm already logged into Gmail under my US Citizen Pod account. I click YouTube and it's gonna automatically create an account or you can log into YouTube itself, which let's see if I can get rid of this. You log into YouTube itself, you can switch in your switch an account and you can add whatever account or Gmail that you want to create your YouTube channel. Okay, so here I am, I've created a new Gmail uh, channel uh, called US Citizen Kitty. And in fact, my US citizen kitty just walked in and wants a snack. So let me give him a snack. So here I can go in and at the very top, it says create a channel. So now I've created the channel. And one of the first things it's gonna do is up want, ask you to upload a picture. Of course, you can skip this and come back to it later, but it, because my cat is so adorable, I had to share that. <laughs> so. Yes, this is Frankie. So now basically this is what your plain YouTube channel will see uh, will look like. You're going to see your name on the top. You you'll see that profile picture that you uh that you uh, put up there. But now this is where you're, you you some people get stuck. You can add your own cell phone uh phone videos or live streams or I like to say uh, upload my PowerPoints that have been saved as MP4s. And I know we got a lot of PowerPoints out there that you see uh, that would be really good to basically put up. Either you can put it up with, with narration or without narration. You could put up recorded meetings via, via Google Meet or Zoom. And um, I think one of the most effective way uh, uses of this is uh, CASAS, um, the EL civics meetings uh, run uh, are put up, are recorded, and then they're uploaded later on, and people can go back and review those uh, those uh, videos. So that's really helpful for some people. Um, you could also uh, upload screencasts uh, from Loom or Screencastifies, or 
the one thing that I'm going to talk a lot about today is adding content for other YouTube channels, such as videos or playlists. And I like both. And I'm going to talk about uh, using other people's videos and making playlists so you can get that content out there. And gradually you can start building up your YouTube channel. You get your students used to coming to your channel, to reviewing things, and then you get your students um, uh, uh, perhaps getting exci more excited about this and cre perhaps creating their own videos. Uh, before I continue on, do I have any questions? It's a little bit difficult for me to see the chat. And feel free to ask any questions during, during, uh, during my presentation. OK, let me continue on. Uh, one of the things is, is the, one of the ways that you can customize your channel is you can uh, talk about uh, or you want to make a general setting for your channel. Up here, the thing that looks like the, um, the cog, this is the settings uh, icon and this is a fairly universal icon. One of the things is that you want to set it to public. So this is, I'm setting it to public because I already know that I want to share this with my students. If you want to set up your account first, maybe you want to set everything to private and then change it and go public. Uh, so you can also say that, uh, I always want to say that my category is education and there's two licenses that you can use. Uh, let me talk about them. First of all, standard YouTube uh, content. So if somebody takes your YouTube uh, your YouTube content and uses it for themselves and gets they basically um, they get money from it, you can basically uh, appeal to YouTube, file a, a copyright infringement um, uh, form or report. And YouTube can basically inform the the uh, the person who violated your copyright. They'll take it down. So you don't have to deal with that person who took your information directly. YouTube takes care of it. And it's pretty much of an automatic pro process. The other one is Creative Commons. And you might really want to consider this, especially if you're doing things on, um, on Canvas. So, um, and I am not as familiar as I should be with Canvas Studio. Uh, but the thing is, is that some people like to hold their things in uh, Canvas Studio. Eventually, they do move it to a YouTube channel so people can access that information outside of uh, outside of Canvas, um, outside of the Canvas app. Now, some of the things that you really would want to be careful with if you, you've done doing it in Canvas, if you're doing videos in Canvas, make sure you're not sharing things from Flipgrid or I'm sorry, Flip or uh, students' comments and stuff like that. Make sure it's your own content and make sure, please be very, very careful, very, very sensitive to students' privacy. Uh, don't share their content and let you have explicit information. And of course, always review your your uh, your um, educational institutions um, uh, rules about uh, about uh, photo uh, photo permissions or photo photo releases. Okay. Um, the other thing is is that I always want to uh, add the keywords. So, for instance, I have education, ESL, ELL, literacy, adult education, ed tech, citizenship. Uh, of course, you would want to add things if you're involved with corrections or ABE. That's going to be really, really important because you're going to be uh, sharing. Um, content from your uh, website, perhaps you're going to be sharing those uh, ESL, I'm sorry, those uh, playlists, you're going to un want to un um, un uncheck the, um, the allow advertisements to, to be displayed along your videos. Why do you want to uncheck that is because the students will be able to find that a little bit easier. But again, that's a personal change. You can go back and forth and flip these things on and off as you will. Um, so far, again, you want to 
you want to keep your liked videos privacy uh, private. So, for instance, there's some comedians that I, I really, really like. However, if some members of my family saw that or some of my students, they would be kind of shocked. And so uh, mm -hmm. I want to keep those liked videos uh, 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 checked private. Uh, I want to keep my subscriptions private because for the same thing, um, I don't want them to uh, see uh, uh, some of the things that I do like. Uh -huh. Although late, uh, there is a section on YouTube that you can show some of the, the uh, channels that you recommend. For instance, I really like things from VOA. I love things from the United States government. I really love some of the ESL creators out on YouTube. So those are the things that I can share in another section. And um, that's really good to see. Um, do you want to keep your safe playlist private? No, you don't. You want to make them public because you're going to be distributing them to your students. Okay. So if you want further information, and I have a, a Padlet that I will share later on about uh, about uh, the different YouTube uh, videos and channels that I recommend. Uh, you can take a look at this playlist. I have a bit.ly down here, bit.ly slash yt um, uh, hyphen creator. So here it can, you get some more information about customizing your channel. Um, and I want to talk about the channel composition. You want to think about your channel in terms of a hierarchy. So at the very, very top layer, you're going to want to have maybe your most recent video or, uh, yeah, you want to have your most recent video or a welcome video. And this video is actually a, a video I did with Pat Patricia Hernandez uh, during COVID, I believe. Uh, I want to have some, um, this is a uh, group of, or a series of videos that I did uh, with Patricia Hernandez and uh, during COVID that's talking about some recent information during uh, COVID. And that was really important to get that information out here. Here's some uh, videos, a playlist. And in fact, I have one here from um, uh, Brandon, Brendan Peacock from BPSOS. So great, great organization. And then I have created playlists that I put together uh, incorporating some of, matching some of my videos with other people people's videos. So again, you want to see, the students want to see the most important things on the top of your page, and then you can basically create a priority list basically with your page. Again, this is another way to envision it, uh, how you have the basic channel planner. You have a feature video, you have your uploads, your created playlist, and your saved playlist. It's and also, that doesn't want, uh, yes. thank you. Okay, and this one is you have some feature channels that can be chosen by you. And this one, YouTube has, it seems that they have taken this away, related channels chosen by YouTube. Now it's more like their suggestions from advertisers. I want to go on. I've used this term uh, several times in what is a playlist. And a playlist is a, a list of ordered videos. It allows videos, uh, allows viewers to watch multiple videos with the, um, and it, it, the videos appear in a predetermined order by the playlist owner. So you're the ones who's setting up what people are going to see and what order the students are going to see the, the videos in. It's not going to be an algorithm. It's you, the teacher, who is doing this. A playlist can be composed by videos uploaded by you or uploaded by another creator and then saved or imported to the list. So I wanted to be really uh, specific in this case. So for instance, there's a, if there's a really great video from Jennifer ESL about pronunciation, I'm not going to download her video and re up upload it to my channel and pretend pass it off as if it was mine. I'm going to be basically creating um, what is that called? A something like a shortcut where there's a link between my uh, my channel and her channel. 
if one of my students clicks on Jennifer, if my one of my students is on my my channel and they click on a video from Jennifer ESL, Jennifer ESL is going to get the pay points from that. I am not going to get anything, but I'm going to get a more informed student. And that's where that's the win for me. I have a, a, a further list about uh, this is from uh, these are directions from Google a uh, bit. Uh, so again, this is bit.ly slash playlist dash help. This is uh, these are um, from Google about how to create and manage playlists and sharing videos. So this is very specific information from Google. However, I do have to warn you. Things appear different differently on every single advice I use uh, when I when I work, I usually use a Windows uh, machine. Uh, it's going to look a little bit different on Mac machine. It looks a lot different on my Apple iPhone. It's going to look a lot different on um, uh, on an Android. So again, you have to be a little bit aware and a little bit uh, flexible when you take a look at these directions and click uh, click along with them. So I want to talk about adding a play uh, a video or a playlist to the channel. You start with the video that you want in the playlist. Under the video, you add add to icon, which is usually a big plus, and you can select watch later, which I don't want to do. I want to select uh, a, a playlist and uh, a playlist that I've already created, or I could click create a new playlist. And if you create a new playlist, you enter the playlist name and then you use the drop down box to select the playlist privacy setting. If it's private, that only you uh, only, you can only uh, view the playlist. Usually if I'm doing something special for a, a student, a lot of times I'll uh, select the um, unlisted um, uh, 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 selection because I don't, uh, so they can basically, sh um, so I've created it, they can see it, but um, nobody else can see what I've sent them. Okay, so that's one of the positive things about that. But frequently, because I deal with a lot of students, I'm going to be creating public playlists, then you do it, click or create. And I'll, I'll demonstrate this a little bit later. <clears throat> so again, now this is so this is the second part of um, creating a playlist to the channel there's two types of playlists there's a created playlist so these are uh, these are videos uh, organized by topic so i'm sitting there and i'm creating that playlist and i'm saying hey i want to put together something about uh, jobs esl jobs or basics or maybe I want to pick and choose some videos from e learning um, VOA learning English. So those are created playlists that I put together and I put them in a certain se sequence. Save playlists come for other channels. So another creator has picked and cho chosen these videos. They've strung them to get together in playlists. And they basically said, this is public. I'm going to allow you to borrow this playlist and basically put a uh, alias on your own YouTube channel so you can access this playlist so your students can see it and they don't have to click away from your channel. But then again, again, they're going to get the credit for this. So here's one from Mark Kulik that he's already created about Grammar Made Simple. Again, things about food and drink and stuff from uh, Jennifer ESL. And a lot of these uh, these uh, samples I'm using right now are from literacy level because I did a lot, I taught literacy for many years. Later on, I'll be sharing things for ABE and uh, corrections and stuff like that. Um, here's a little bit, oh, I have something in the chat. Let me say, let me take a look. How is private different from unlisted? Private is something only you can see. Okay, so I can only see that video. I can only see that uh, that uh, uh, channel. Sorry, that um, what is that called? 
a playlist that I've created. A listed is that I've created it. It's not public. People who come and visit my channel can't see it. But I've created these vi these videos. I put them in the playlist. I create said that they're unlisted. Now I can share them with another student or another series of students that I specifically designate. They can access that content, but nobody else can access the content. So this is a way that you preserve several things. You prefer, you uh, you preserve the student's privacy. Maybe you don't. They don't want people to know that they're ha struggling with certain types of pronunciation. Or I will uh, do a series of citizenship interview practice interviews with them. I want to see those videos. I want to share those videos instead of just sending them one by one. I put them in a playlist and the student can watch those videos whenever they want to. When they graduate from citizenship, I delete the, that, uh, that uh, playlist to preserve their privacy. So uh, does that answer, answer your question? Hopefully, EL? Okay, let's see. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, EL, do you have, um, I, I should have asked this up front. Does anybody uh, have any YouTube uh, channels or do they have, do you guys, does anybody have a YouTube channel? Um, or is anybody thinking about getting, or doing a YouTube channel? Can you throw that in the chat right now? Yeah. <laughs> or you could say something, you could talk. Yeah, we, we created a YouTube channel uh, at Venice, and we put some of our, you know, informational videos about how to help students, you know, navigate X, Y, and Z. That's really, really good. So, because a lot of times people are saying the same thing over and over again, it's like, wait, this could be good publicity for our school. So, if you want to drop your the link into the, the chat box a little bit later, that would be great. Okay, you have a channel, but every video is unlisted, if you recall correctly. Well, you know, you don't have to, you can unlist or make public things video by video. So if you say, okay, I got, I have 10 videos, I want to make two of them public, two of them are re ready for pub prime time, go ahead and do that. And those eight are going to still be preserved and they're going to only be visible to you or whoever you choose. Okay, um, I'm gonna move on and talk about adding a video to a playlist. We're gonna organize videos from different sources. So here's a, uh, a, a video about vegetables. Uh, I'm gonna click the share, uh, the share button. It's gonna say, uh, create a new play, or I could save it to watch later, or I could create a new playlist. I've named it vegetables. I can change the privacy here from public to private to unlisted. And of course I can hit the create. Now uh, I'm gonna take another, uh, another one. Um, let's see if you can see this. This is adding a video to a playlist part two. So there's a couple things that you could do. You, of course you click share. You could copy the URL, and especially if you're in Canvas, you're going to probably want to get the URL, or you can copy and paste the embed code. So I um, put things up on Blogger. I'm going to be more interested in the embed code. Uh, Canvas, you don't have to do that. You just use the URL. And you can note the start time. So sometimes you may want, you may not want the first part of the video but you want to start it very close to uh, the more relevant information. So you can basically click this box here and talk about the start time. So, and it will basically incorporate the second, uh, second where the video should begin. Okay, uh, let's see. So that's an example of me embedding it in a post. Okay, next one, please, chat. Okay. Is this from Venice? What? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have one for YouTube. Okay. 
Uh, who just dropped this in there? What, what's your what's your YouTube channel about? So I'm the transition counselor for um, Victor Valley Adult Education Regional Consortium. Yes. Um, so I have two I have two YouTube's on there, but or uh, videos. The first one is how to apply to the college. Mm -hmm. The second one is how to complete online orientation and placement survey. So it's just like a step by step walkthrough. Okay, I have been begging our adult ed and college consortium to put up a, a, a channel of videos walking him to the college and talking about transitioning and back, back and forth. I am base, I'm gonna show them your channel and say, look, this can be done and it looks good. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I think it's a really effective tool. I really do. It's a great way to, to basically promote your, your system. Your, your school system. Yeah, you want to share with students. Okay, good. Okay, let me continue on. Um, here's another example of me, instead of grabbing the video uh, video URL, I'm grabbing the, the uh, URL of a playlist. And what is a playlist? This is a pl uh, something that's already on another channel. It's been, uh, uh, developed by another creator. So this was Jennifer um, Jennifer um, uh, from uh, English with Jennifer, or I usually say Jennifer ESL. And she basically did a whole series of beginning uh, conversation videos, uh, 65. So instead of basically uh, copying and pasting all those URLs, I all I have to do is grab this one URL of her playlist and I copy it and now I can basically show it over on my own channel. Again, she's going to get credit for that, but my students are who are getting used to YouTube or have this one place where they can go and see that information. So that's the advantage of this. Also, if I have to send my students uh, uh, emails uh, particularly in Canvas, I was doing this. It's like you are having problems with this one series of writing, uh, writing uh, grammar points. I would basically create playlists, and I was able to use the URL and send it directly to the students. So I said, "Watch these three videos. Watch these five videos," and basically, so they can reinforce correct usage of a certain grammar point. So knowing how to flip back and forth uh, from the URLs to the embed code is gonna be really, really important. I wanna talk a little bit more about saving a playlist from another channel to your, your own channel. And the reason why we're talking about this is, hey, maybe you don't have your own content to upload about your, you haven't created your own videos, but you can start populating your channel with videos from our and playlists from other uh, channels. And I don't wanna just throw up other people's videos to my channel. Usually want, I wanna organize them in playlists. It keeps things a little bit more organized. And um, so, and students can, uh, can really benefit from seeing a series of videos. And usually the shorter, the better in a series of videos that basically reinforces and maybe actually extends their learning that they, they that's happening. So I click from my front page, I click customize channel button on, the, on my channel. I scroll down to featured sections and add a section plus a sign. I select a single playlist. I search for the desired playlist and enter the playlist URL. And I click reposition arrow, new save playlist on my channel's home page. Now, that is a whole bunch of gobbledygook. Can I demonstrate that? Let me check the chat first. Um, and then I'll try to demonstrate. Where do you get the start time? Okay, I'm going to, I'll demonstrate that live right now. Okay. And let's see. I no problem seeing that. Let me uh, make that bigger. Uh, I have a channel, but every, okay, so, okay. And that, let me take a look at the, I don't see it for disallowing, oh, okay. There's one for dis, there's one for disabling interest-based ads. You know, yeah, that is true. Um, disallowing advertisements. 
a long, long time ago, you could disallow advertisements, and now I don't think you ha we have that option anymore. So I'm going to stop share for a second. I'm going to share to my own uh, YouTube uh, channel. And today, oh, hello, kitties. Uh, today, uh, so this is, okay. Um, so here is a, one of the, uh, here's a basic ESL uh, channel that I have. Uh, we have uh, two, uh, two uh, uh, buttons that I'm gonna refer to. Because I wanna talk about the customizing the channel, because I'm gonna be incorporating somebody else's uh, uh, playlist, that's where I'm gonna go to first. Okay, now, um, so, I want to customize the channel. So you see a couple of things here. I have my icons. I have my welcome messages on top. We have featured sections and we can add sections. And unfortunately, we can only do 12 sections. So let me get rid of one of these. So I'm going to get, I'm going to remove that section. I'm going to add a section. I'm gonna say I want a single playlist. Now I can do a playlist, any playlist note. So I can search for this or I could actually put in the URL. Oh, here we go. Jennifer ESL, the Learn English Lessons 65. So now it's been basically imported over here but it's a little bit low. I it would appear after videos that I want this actually higher. I want my students to see it like one of the first things. So here it's a little bit difficult to do, but you can use this bar to move this up and down your page. Usually you can do it. Okay, and I wanna put it, Oh, I guess I'm going to repeat it twice. That's maybe why they're having problems. So here I'm going to publish. If you don't publish it, it's not going to save your changes. So I'm going to publish it. Now I would go to my channel. And I would be. You're going to hear that so many times. Hopefully not, but I will. Here I see that it is on my channel. I have a duplicate. I don't want that duplicate, but here it's basically put in the position that I've wanted to. Um, above that, here's a, a series of uh, videos that I've created that's talking about uh, making appointments. So um, I wanted to, um, somebody asked about the start, the start time. Let me demonstrate that just for a second, okay? So I'm gonna grab this one here. Share, I'm gonna share it, okay? Oh, sorry, let me go back. Um, skip ad. So here, we're gonna go maybe two minutes in. All right, sorry maybe a minute in. You can play the video and uh, decide where you would want to start uh, start it. Okay, so I'm going to start a, a, like a minute or two in. Okay, now I'm going to share it. I'm going to go to, to I'm going to go down to this box. And I'm going to say copy start at one minute, two seconds. This is changed from time so there's a question mark a question mark says okay what's your variable that's going to happen here i want to change the start time t equals 62 so 62 is uh 60 seconds plus two more seconds you copy it and then that's where you would basically uh embed it or you would put it into whatever URL or you would put it into Canvas. So that's that's the way you do your start time. So that works fine right there. 
I want to go back to my presentation just a second because I'm going to demonstrate stop time. Uh, nope. Okay, this is a good video. And again, I have it as this a bit.ly slash start stop video. You have the start start equals 150, which I think is three minutes. And END equals 180, OK? Yeah. So basically, I'm just saying, hey, I want you to watch only the middle, middle of this video. After it stops, then the student can continue and watch another video after that. So again, this is, again, uh, start time and stop time, OK? Um, OK, great. Any questions about that? Okay, good. So, um, okay, so that was creating a list. Oh, yes, please. Did somebody say something? Yeah. Okay. So, one of the big, uh, let me, uh, this is another tip that I have. One of the biggest problems is I don't know if, if, you're like me, but I've fallen into a web of short videos and I just scroll, scroll, scroll. And that time that I thought I was going to read my novel is past. And I, you know, so, um, so I've, I've found that even though I'm not on TikTok, the videos that have been port being ported over from TikTok or from TikTok to Facebook or whatever the case may be, very, very interesting. But are usually start on topic and go way, way off topic. So this is something that I've, I've started doing is I've, I've started creating playlists of short videos. So it's going to still capture the student's interest, but it's going to remain on topic and they're going to be short videos because sometimes if you give them like a even a three minute video, it's too much time. But if there's enough variety in a series of videos, they're going to basically get the point. So um, let me review the, uh, the, the steps first. You go to your manage videos button on your channel on the it's on the top right. Um, you do you click the create icon and it looks like a video camera on the very, very top right. You're going to create a new playlist and name the new playlist and click the playlist, and then you're gonna add by search or by URL. Now, why do you have to do it this way? Because, let's see, I'm gonna go back to uh, YouTube again. YouTube, here we go. I'm just gonna do a search on citi uh, citizenship short shorts. Citizenship. And you look for the hash, you always use the hashtag shorts. And these are videos that are under a minute. So here's a whole series of videos. If I sit there and I say, okay, I want, oh, this is a nice one from Essa. Really quality, uh, quality work there. Okay, let me stop. If I share it, I'm gonna copy it. Oh, there's, there's, oh, sorry. What I wanted to say, there's no way to simply um, hit the plus sign and, and copy it into a uh, uh, a created um, a created playlist. Okay, so what you have to do, there's two ways. You could copy it and dump it into a playlist without the uh, for share sister. And let me grab that because I need to actually borrow, uh, use that a little bit later. Okay. Cancel again, share list. As you can see, there's no way that I can hit that plus and automatically share it to a playlist. I have to go in a roundabout way to do that. So let me show you how I did that. So I go to my channel. You have, we, okay. And here you're going to go to manage videos. So this is where all your videos are stored. Some of them are public, some of them are private. You have playlists, et cetera, et cetera. I wanna to go to the top, I want to hit create. 
I want to say that I want to create a new playlist and I'm going to do a, something called citizenship shorts. I want to make it public or you can make it a private or enlisted, whatever you choose. It's created. Now what you're going to have to do, you don't see it in front of you. It's like, hey, I just see my videos. Go to playlists. You're going to see it on top right here. I want to edit it. Now I want to add the videos. I could add the videos in a couple of ways. One way is I could add the videos by that URL, OK? Mm -hmm. But I want to take off the question mark featured. And now I can basically add that. So I've added that video and it's going to appear on my playlist. I want to go and look for some more things. So here are some more videos. So I can simply click on what I want to use. Now, is this going to be appropriate? It's not going to be appropriate because it's a little bit, it's 25 minutes, okay? So that's not a, that's not going to be cool. But um, I know, let's see. Click a little bit over here. Oh, here's another one. You say, hey, I want this. Whoa, I don't want that. No, 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 no. Let me go back. I'm sorry. I, um, so I'm sorry. What I, I didn't do one thing. What I did was I didn't say uh, add videos. Okay, now I'm going to, now it's going to come up with the videos. I put in my search. And I've said shorts because that's, I only want those short videos. And my topic is, it could be citizenship, it could be pronunciation, it could be uh, AB, it could be whatever you want. And now I can pick and choose what videos I want to, uh, to add to my citizenship, uh, uh, my, my citizenship program. And you notice I'm picking some from ESSA, but let me pick, some, I keep on picking from ESSA. No offense, I love ESSA. Um, I wanna grab some from other, uh, from other groups. It's gonna automatically add these videos. And I can now move them around and decide what sequence sequence I want them uh, want them to be in. So which one's going to be first? Which one's going to be second? Which one's going to be third? Of course, you can basically um, do it by you can sort by uh, by date or most popular, et cetera. But usually, because I'm a teacher, I want to present things in sequential order to build up a student's knowledge. So now that I have this, let me go back to my channel. I'm going to go to customize. I am so sorry that you've heard that video so many times. OK, so now remember, I basically put in that duplicate. I'm going to remove this section. I'm going to add a section. I'm going to say I want a single playlist. And now I have those citizenship shorts. And I can basically move the, that, that, that new uh, list a little bit further up a line. Let's see, it's a little bit difficult to do uh, so big. OK, now that's uh, moving a little bit better. So instead of the bottom of the page, I'm going to get it closer to the top of the page, hopefully. It's working. If I struggle with this a little bit too much, it's going to be not worth it. Okay. Oh, there we, uh, that's the ESL one. But the point is, is that here, instead of an algorithm deciding what your student, what sequence your students are going to be watching things, you're making that you're making that decision for your, uh, you're making that decision. Okay, so now it's at the very top. I'm going to publish it, and sometimes it takes a minute or two for it to populate. So don't worry. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit delay. It depends how how. Uh, 
So now you see the citizenship charts are at the very top of the page. And I can tell my students, hey, I want you to watch this, the, this series of videos first. Okay, so um, I think we have about 20 minutes left. Yeah, is that correct? Uh, I'm going to basically now going to be talking about how to populate our pages a little bit more. So I'm going to talk about other channel resources. And to do that, I have a Padlet. So this is the Padlet here. Uh, please take a look at this as a bit dot Lee slash teach dash YT slash Padlet. And let me grab this. Let's see if I can grab it and throw it into the um, throw it into the chat. Doesn't seem like I want it wants to go. Can somebody grab that and put that in the chat for me, please? Yeah, Is that could be possible. If not, let me see if I can do it this way. Oh. One moment more minute, I almost have it. Okay, I got it. So back to Zoom, back to chat. Oh, thank you. Wow, so much better. Okay, thank you very much for that. Okay, so now let's go back to Zoom. Share. here okay so i wanted to normally you would think that i would start at the the beginning and i basically have different uh, i talked about creating channels so these are resources about creating a channel uploading videos editing videos creating play, playlists here's a really good series of examples of shorts now the best place to find shorts is simply go to your very youtube channel and see if they have a short section. But I also, Slangman has a new series of shorts that are really good, uh, but I also have um, examples about uh, how to um, make shorts themselves. And I know um, I've created several shorts with um, software from Canva and things like that. I have um, some really good uh, resources for e beginning ESL, intermediate and advanced. But what I would like to do is the newer resources that I added um, just today were um, at the end of the Padlet. So I'm going to start from there. So if you want to talk about uh, video apps and further inf information, Q, which is the computer users for education, uh, has some five um, good ways for students to record videos and screencasts. Most of it is K-12 or uh, K-12 oriented, but I know a lot of our adult learners are using this themselves. Uh, Ed Puzzle, please do not make the mistake that I did. So I took a series of videos from VOA Learning English about the presidents. They're one minute videos. And I asked 10 questions in a one minute video. So students didn't learn anything because the it was so fragmented. You right. need students to have space to actually see, understand, and then respond, okay? So think about your students. Don't pile all the questions in. Basically, basically use a little prudence with that. Um, yeah, EL, um, we know the ESL library is now ELLI. Uh, they had a really good convention and shared some of their um, their videos from that convention. Uh, we, uh, I was wondering if anybody uses Flip with uh, Flipgrid. Let's see, in, or uh, in Canvas. Is Q a website? C U E dot O R G is a um, 
cue.org is a um, the organization, and that's the website. And um, they have conventions. In fact, I think they're going to have a convention that's coming up. But it was originally started in California, uh, just great, gathering together the the uh, you know K twelve and uh, adult educators to do um, how do you use computers in your classroom. Now they're having some great conventions. They have a lot of online resources, so please take a look at that. Um, I have a video in here from Instructure for uh, using Canvas Studio. So um, basically plumbing the depths of Canvas Studio. And um, I know um, OTAN has been sponsoring a series of um, webinars about Canva and, Cam, uh, Canvas and specifically about Canvas Studio. So hopefully they can remediate that and put that up. Nearpod was a uh, used to be a favorite. Uh, people still have a lot invested in Nearpod. Um, oh, here's a really great talk about from OTAN, which is about how to edit, save, and play um, great interactive videos. And they were using uh, PlayPosit.com that app, but that was original. That was recently um, a. a purchased by uh, Wii Video. So that's a, another way, similar, a little bit more sophisticated by uh, than uh, Edpuzzle, but Edpuzzle also has some good uh, adult resources, or sorry, uh, professional development resources, so you can learn more how to use it. Uh, OTAN also has a really good list about how to use, uh, how to use videos and in the classroom. I wanted to talk about adult ed uh, organizations and those um, that's a preview of my my talk tomorrow. Let me see. Just done a lose, but haven't used used it. Oh, I want to talk. Oh, flu, uh, let me talk about flip just for a second and then I'll get Q for you. So uh, let's see Q. OK, this is Q. And let me throw that in, uh, let me throw that. Oh, am I, I, hopefully you can see that. Stop share, so you see that? Yeah, okay, great. So please uh, check out that resource from Q. Stop share, let me go back to, um, oh my gosh, I forgot where I am. Let me continue talking about adult ed. Uh, adult ed organizations, a lot of, there's so, um, tomorrow I'm going to do a presentation about the alphabet soup of adult organizations. So I've tried to put together, uh, not every adult ed organization has a channel, but there's some that you really need to take a look at. So we have all in American English at state. And the reason why um, American English at that state is so valuable is because they not only have videos for students, but they have uh, teachers training and they also have um, MOOGs, which is um, machine. They have a, they have a series of, of, of courses about how to write, how, how to, be a student journalist, et cetera, et cetera. And so they've taken all their the the videos that they created for their cohorts and they put the videos on as a pl separate playlist. So take a look at American English at State. Um, and they also have some really good resources. We have CalPro and CalPro, um, they, they do have a, a web, they do have a YouTube site, but basically, I want to talk, I'll talk about that in a second a little bit more. CASAS has a good website, but the one thing that you need to talk, take a look at at CASAS, you really want to get in, in, in um, you really want to check out, if you're in EL Civics, check out the EL Civic Support uh, um, channel. And there's a specific, um, specific uh, a playlist from uh, Lori, Lower, Lori Howard, that basically uh, records all the Zoom meetings, online EL Civic Zoom meetings. And there's so much information in those videos that it really, even though I participate in those videos, I always go back and rewatch those videos to pick up some points that I didn't see before. So take a look at that one. Uh, 
this was the thing that I want I missed uh, up here. California adult education training schedule. So we do it for CAEP, CalPRO, CASAS, and OTAN. And even though all those groups have um, different website, or sorry, different YouTube channels, what you really want to do is get involved with some of their women webinars and online trainings because they do put up some of their trainings on uh, on their YouTube websites, but they don't put, put up all the trainings. And remember this stuff is free and our uh, we pay taxes to support this and it the uh, the trainings really give back to the, the community. So please do this and consider even um, um, uh, volunteering to do uh, some presentations yourself. Um, I'm going to uh, want to talk about uh, CASA citizenship prep support. Uh, there's going to be some more videos that are coming up, especially because they're considering um, updating the the new um, the new or they're considering redesigning the citizenship interview. Not so much the civics questions. Those are things that people are really concerned about, but they're talking about administrating that a little bit differently. So uh, we have some resources up there and uh, hopefully I'll be able to put up some information about the new redesign. Katizel has some videos. They do not put up all their videos uh, from all their um, different um, uh, groups that they have. They have a lot of online uh, webinars. But I do want to show you one thing from Katisa a little bit later on. Coabe, for my money, Coabe is just really, really good. Uh, it's um, they put up uh, recordings of most of their their uh, webinars, uh, some really fine information there. Uh, here's a really good interview about um, uh, Neta from OTAN. She's talking uh, uh, to the people from uh, Q. They're talking about adult education and how we use it. So uh, basically, they're trying to basically incorporate more ABE and adult education. And she's just really at the forefront of that. Uh, talking about dollar literacy, Google um, ST, ISTE. So this one is really important for adult educators because, again, it's talking about uh, how to use computers and computer in education and digital, digital literacy more effectively in the classroom. Uh, they have some great online um, classes and cohorts, but the convention is just absolutely mind blow blowing. Links, I'm really proud to say that I'm now one of the mo moderators at Links. Um, I um, basically, what am I doing? Oh, I'm a moderator for the new citizenship new civics education and civics uh, uh, forum, but there's some really great discussion on there and occasionally links will will put up some of their, their webinars or recordings from their webinars. Of course, we have OTAN. Pro Literacy has some really good uh, videos about how to use their, um, their products and they also have some good training up there. Oh, here, here we got Marsha Chan, the pronunciation doctor. And the she has she runs the pronunciation group on, on Katisal, and she uploads the webinar recordings from the uh, the pronunciation group up to her her channel from a pronunciation doctor. So if you're having some questions about that, please go take a look at a look at that um, because not everything from Katisal what they do they don't put everything up on YouTube, but some of the best stuff I did find on uh, Marsha Chan's channel. Of course, we have information from TESOL, and this is a really great playlist from EdTech for strategies for playlists. Uh, corrections, this is a big, uh, big deal. A lot of people, um, uh, do I have a minute? I have a minute. Coab, uh, so Coab has a couple of really good things and also uh, uh, TEDx. Uh, going back through ABE, high set workforce development, please take a look at, ooh, Take a look at this one from World Education, Teaching Soft Skills and Incorporating Workplace Readiness Skills. That was a great webinar. So again, oh, Citizenship uh, USCIS just put up four new videos about uh, the citizenship interview process. Of course, you can go back and take a look at all these other videos, all these other playlists. 